بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نست غفر و نؤمن به و نتوکل علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون اولئک علی ہدا مربم و الاکم المفلحون وقال تعالی ولقد ارسلنا رسولا من قبلك منهم من قصصنا عليك ومنهم من لم نقصص عليك وما كان لرسول ان ياتي بآية الا باذن الله فاذا جاء امر الله قضي بالحق وخسر هنالك المبطلون وقال تعالى وما أرسلنا من قبلك إلا رجالا نوحي إليهم من أهل القرى أفلم يسيروا في الأرض فينظروا كيف كان عاقبة الذين من قبلهم ولدار الآخرة خير للذين اتقوا أفلا تعقلون وقال تعالى وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول ولا نبي إلا إذا تمنى ألقى الشيطان في أمنيته فينسخ الله ما يلقي الشيطان ثم يحكم الله آياته والله عليم حكيم وقال تعالى وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال تعالى وما أرسلناك إلا كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا ولكن أكثر الناس لا يؤمنون وقال تعالى الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما وقال تعالى ومن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا أو قال أوحي إلي ولم يوح إليه شيء ومن قال سأنزل مثل ما أنزل الله ولو ترى إذ الظالمون في غمرات الموت والملائكة باسطوا أيديهم أخرجوا أنفسكم اليوم تجزون عذاب الهون بما كنتم تقولون على الله غير الحق وكنتم عن آياته تستكبرون ولقد جئتمونا فرادا كما خلقناكم أول مرة وتركتم ما خولناكم وراء ظهوركم وما نرى معكم شفعاءكم الذين زعمتم أنهم فيكم شركاء لقد تقطع بينكم وظل عنكم ما كنتم تزعمون وقال تعالى فلا أقسم بما تبصرون وما لا تبصرون إنه لقول رسول كريم وما هو بقول شاعر قليلا ما تؤمنون ولا بقول كاهن قليلا ما تذكرون تنزيل من رب العالمين ولو تقول علينا بعض الأقاويل لأخذنا منه باليمين ثم لقطعنا منه الوتين فما منكم من أحد عنه حاجزين وإنه لتذكرة للمتقين وإنا لنعلم أن منكم مكذبين وإنه لحسرة على الكافرين وإنه لحق اليقين فسبح باسم ربك العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فضلت على الأنبياء بست أعطيت جوامع الكلم ونصرت بالرعب 
وجعلت لي الأرض مسجدا وطهورا وكان النبي يبعث إلى قومه خاصة وأرسلت إلى الخلق كافة وختم بي النبيون وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام أنا خاتم النبيين لا نبي بعدي وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام لو كان بعدي نبي لكان عمر وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام سيكون في أمتي ثلاثون كذابون دجالون كلهم يزعم أنه رسول الله ألا وأنا خاتم النبيين لا نبي بعدي أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ما قال ربنا وخالقنا ورازقنا من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما دروس شريف ونبى اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اے رسول امین خاتم المرسلین تجھ سا کوئی نہیں تجھ سا کوئی نہیں اے رسول امی خاتم المرسلین تجھ سا کوئی نہیں تجھ سا کوئی نہیں ہے عقیدہ یہ اپنا بصدق و یقین تجھ سا کوئی نہیں تجھ سا کوئی نہیں اے براہیمی و حاشمی خوش لقب اے تو عالی حسب اے تو والا نسب دودمان قریشی کے در سمی تجھ سا کوئی نہیں تجھ سا کوئی نہیں بزم کونین پہلے سجائی گئی پھر تیری ذات منظر پہ لائی گئی بزم کونین پہلے سجائی گئی پھر تیری ذات منظر پہ لائی گئی اے ازل کے حسین اے عبد کے حسین تجھ سا کوئی نہیں تجھ سا کوئی نہیں ختم نبوت زندہ بار ختم نبوت زندہ بار آگے کیا ہے کل سے اب بناؤں نہیں ختم نبوت ہے ایمان ختم نبوت دین کی جان یہ اسلام کی ہے بنیاد ختم نبوت زندہ بار ہوں لاکھوں سلام اس آقا پر دل لاکھوں جس نے جوڑ دیئے اور دنیا کو دیا پیغام سکون طوفانوں کے رخ موڑ دیئے حضور آئے تو کیا کیا ساتھ نعمت لے کے آئے ہیں اخوت علم و حکمت آدمیت لے کے آئے ہیں کوئی صدیق سے پوچھے صداقت کن سے حاصل کی عمر ہیں ان کے شاہد وہ عدالت لے کے آئے ہیں کہا عثمان نے میری سخاوت ان کا صدقہ ہے علی دیں گے شہادت وہ شجاعت لے کے آئے ہیں رہے گا یہ قیامت تک سلامت معجزہ ان کا وہ قرآن مبین نور ہدایت لے کے آئے ہیں خدا نے رحمت للعالمی خود ان کو فرمایا عمر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم رحمت للعالمی خدا نے رحمت للعالمی خود ان کو فرمایا قسم اللہ کی وہ رحمت ہی رحمت لے کے آئے ہیں خدا نے دین کامل کمپلیٹ کر دیا ہے اے امی ان پر محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پرچمی ختم نبوت لے کے آئے ہیں محمد پرچمی ختم نبوت لے کے آئے ہیں پرچم بینر فلاگ ختم نبوت کا بینر لے کر آئے ہیں Respected elders, brothers, friends, first of all, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the tawfiq to perform Salatul Asr with Jama'at and thereafter sitting in the house of Allah to learn something about our beautiful deen. May Allah give me the tawfiq to say something which is beneficial for all of us. Our brothers, sisters listening at the back, also those joined with us at home through the transmitter system may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand our deen may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to realize the value of our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah give us his true and complete and proper love and give us that close bond and attachment with rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
respected elders, brothers, friends. I was here straight after namaz, but then I had to go to visit our uncle Dilshad Saad. He's in hospital. Make dua, Allah give him shifa. Amen. So we quickly went and came back because visiting time finishes after bayan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him complete shifa. Amen. Whatever khidmat he does for the masjid and with the ulama sulaha, may Allah accept all the khidmat. May Allah give shifa to all those who are marids within the community. Respected elders, brothers, friends. Bhai Mawlana Habib sahab ko bhi aage bula lo. Main to dekha hi nahi. Alo. Respected elders, brothers, friends. Today's jalsa is about khatme nabuwat. Finality of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's messengership, risalat, nabuwat. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final prophet, last prophet. There is no need for another prophet to come after him. And there is no prophet to come after him. Nobody can claim to be a prophet after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who came 1434 years ago. We are into the 15th century now. So he came and he said, prophethood, nabuwat is finished upon me. This is belief of the whole Muslim Ummah. Now if someone denies this, then he is denying a clear-cut verse of the Quran. And if you deny one verse of the Quran, you go out of the fold of Islam. Allah said clearly, وَلَكِرْ رَسُولَ اللَّهُ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّ That's not the only verse which proves prophethood, a finality of the prophethood. There are 99 verses in the Quran which indicate towards, directly or indirectly, towards Khatme Nabuwat. Hazrat Mufti Shafi Sahib, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, has mentioned them in his book called Khatme Nabuwat. Simple name. And then he has mentioned over 200 hadith which mention finality of the Prophethood. And then he mentioned the quotes of the Sahaba. Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and the aimma and salafi salihin and the ijma' and consensus of the ummah upon khatme nabuwat. So, this is, we have to remember that this is a bunyadi yaqeedah. This is a foundation, root among our aqaid. Just as we should believe in Allah, in his angels, in his books, in his messengers, and in taqdeer and in life after death, and in Jannat and in Jahannam, similarly we have to believe that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is khatamun nabiyyin. If we don't believe this, just as if someone denies one of the other aspects of our Iman, he goes out of the fold of Iman, Islam, similarly denying uh, the khatme nabuwat takes you out of the fold of Islam. This is our aqeedah. Today, we need to understand a few things. Number one, first of all, what is nabuwat? And then, Number two, what does the word khatm mean? And number three, we will discuss a little bit about those who claimed to be prophets after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we will talk a little bit about the person who recently claimed that and has few followers. Also, we will mention some of those people who believed in him and then rejected him. Some of his family members who were very close to him and they did not believe in him as a prophet. First of all, Nubuwat. Nubuwat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Sayyiduna Adam. Ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam in Jannah. And then after the mistake, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him down. And he said, قُلْ نَحْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ I will send you some guidance. Whosoever follows that guidance, he will have no fear, nor will he grieve. However, those who deny and belie our signs, they will be the dwellers of Jahannam remaining in there forever. So, this guidance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down is through the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. 
Allah knows fully well where to place his messengership. Who has the capacity and the capability and that isti'idat and salahiyyat of becoming a Nabi. Allah knows that fully well. Allah's knowledge is comprehensive. His knowledge encompasses the past, the present and the future. And he knows the abilities of human beings. Who has what ability, what capability. And Allah deals with the human beings according to their capability. So he knows who has the capability of becoming a messenger, a rasul, a prophet. Allah said, Allah yajtabi ilayhi man yasha wa yahdi ilayhi man yunib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects for himself and draws closer to himself and chooses for himself whomsoever he wishes. And he guides whoever turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has that selection policy. Allah chooses, Allah selects. So anbiya kiram alayhi musalawat wa taslimat are those special chosen selected servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom he chose to bless them with this uh, important uh, matter of messengership, prophethood, giving them the duty to take this message, carry it forward, spread it among the people. This is the hidayat which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the humanity through the anbiya kiram alayhi musalawat wa taslimat. The first Nabi and Prophet was Sayyiduna Adam. Ala Nabiyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. Abu Zal Ghifari asked, Ya Rasulullah, is Adam a Prophet? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, E wa Nabiyun Mukallam. Of course, he was a Prophet, and to him as well Allah spoke while he was in Jannah. So he is a Prophet, he is the first Prophet. After that, Adam alayhi salam was sent down, and humanity started progressing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among his sons sent Shis alayhi salam as a Prophet. At that time, humanity was in its infancy. It needed to learn how to survive and live in the world. Eat, drink, make houses, make clothes. Allah, how to read, write, progress, education. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught humanity through Adam salam and his children, Shis salam and other prophets. As humanity progresses, a few hundred years pass. And then shaitan is pl starts playing around and he fulfills that oath which he made and he starts misleading people. He makes them commit shirk and kufr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam. He is the first prophet to be sent to those who denied and rejected who committed kufr. So Nuh alayhi salam comes and he stays on this earth for a long time. He invites people to Allah. Some believe, others deny. He fulfills this duty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him, him to himself, rewards him for his efforts. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on sending prophet after prophet. Hud alayhi salam, Salih alayhi salam, Shuaib alayhi salam. And the time comes of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And moves on until uh, 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 after Musa alayhi salam, many, 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 many numerous prophets come. At one time, there used to be hundreds of prophets throughout the world, throughout the whole area. We understand this through the ayat of وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ Ibn Kathir narrates over here that in one day they might have killed 70 prophets in one day. This was the habit of the Bani Israel of that time. That over here and there, in every area there used to be prophets, but they didn't like the prophets and they didn't like the reformation which they brought and uh, renovations which they brought. They didn't like it. They want to hold on to their bid'at and innovations. So they used to kill the prophets. So many, many prophets. That is how the figure comes of the hadith of Abu Zar Ghifari, 124,000 prophets which Allah sent. Until the time comes as bring progress from after uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam to Ismail and Ishaq alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam and then Yusuf alayhi salam and after that Musa alayhi salam and after Musa alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam, Dawud alayhi salam, Zakaria alayhi salam, Yahya alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Zulkifl alayhi salam. These are some renowned prophets. Allah mentions in the Quran names of 25 prophets. 17 are mentioned in وَتِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَاهَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءِ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ كُلًّا هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا وَمِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَتِهِ دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَى وَهَارُونَ وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَزَكَرِيَّا وَيَحْيَى وَعِيسَى وَإِلْيَاسَ كُلٌّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَالْيَسَعَ وَيُونُسَ وَلُوطًا وَكُلًّا فَضَّلْنَا عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ وَمِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ وَاجْتَبَيْنَاهُمْ وَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Allah mentions 25 prophets, 17 prophets over here and the other 8 prophets Allah mentions in other ayat of the Qur'an.
So this is something to do with Nabuwat. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the prophets, give them this special duty, they fulfill that duty. Our belief regarding the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam is that Anbiya alayhim salam are ma'soom. Ma'soom means sinless. They never ever deliberately disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even unintentionally, Allah protects them. Slide here and there, some mistake might happen unintentionally. But since their rank is so high in the eyes of Allah, that even if they make a slight mistake, Allah takes it very, Allah doesn't take it lightly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, why did you make this mistake? This is what happens, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to keep them right straight on track. Anbiya alayhim salam are ma'soom. They don't never, never disobey and sin and disobey, never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends these Anbiya alayhim salam. They are sinless, faultless, masoob. They obey Allah. They are, they are devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping, calling to Allah and propagating the deen of Allah. Until Isa alayhi salam is the final prophet among Banu Israel. After Isa alayhi salam, no prophet came, as in the hadith of Bukhari, Laysa baynana nabiyun, between me and Isa, there's no, no prophet. The Christians claim that the 12 disciples of Isa alayhi salam were prophets. Uh, according to Islamic belief, the 12 disciples were not prophets. Isa alayhi salam is the final prophet. Thereafter, after 600 years, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam comes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam is blessed with this prophethood. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him that you are the last prophet. Now, no more prophets, no messengers are going to come after you. Not in one verse, not in two verse. As I mentioned, Allah indicates that in 99 verses. Read the first page of Surah Al-Baqarah, which I recited to you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alif Lam Mim Zalikal Kitab La Rayba Fi Hudan Lil Muttaqeen. Alif Lam Mim, this is the book. This is the book that should be classed as a complete book. There is no doubt in this book being the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This book is guidance for those who have fear of God in their hearts. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb, who believe in the unseen. وَيُقِيمُونَ salat, Establish salat. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ yunfiqoon, And spend from that which we have provided for them. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ Who believe in that which, we, which has been sent down to you. وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And that what, which was sent down before you. Ponder over that word. وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ That which was sent down before you. If there was something still to come after Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah would have said وَمَا سَيُنزَلُ مِنْ بَعْدِكَ And in that which will be revealed after you as well. Because Allah's words are complete. Allah doesn't forget. لا يضل ربي ولا ينسى. Allah said وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Full stop. So this ayat proves that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is final prophet and the Quran which is sent down to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final book. No new prophet to come and no new book to come after the Quran and no prophet after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوْخِنُونَ They also believe in life after death. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ They are upon the guidance which they have received from their Rabb and they are the success, successful ones. So, in the first page of Surah Al-Baqarah, always remember, if someone starts debating with you, then you open the first page of Surah Al-Baqarah and show him the word, وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Tell him, this verse proves finality of Prophet Wasallam. There is no need for something else to come after him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many many places uses this word وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Allah Paak reveals the Quran over a period of 23 years. Quran Sharif has 6,666 ayat. In no ayat did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say another prophet is going to come after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no play, place where it says that. In fact, after 23 years of hard work, when Islam has spread throughout the Arabian Peninsula, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in the plain of Arafat during Hajjatul Wada, three months before he, he departed from this dunya. He is uh, at that special moment on the day of Arafat. He is on that she camel and he is pleading to Allah. He is crying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Arafat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down Jibreel alayhi salam with that special verse. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radhitu lakum al-islam deena. 
Today I have perfected for you your deen and completed upon you my favors and I have chosen Islam for you as a deen. Deen is completed and Allah's blessings have been completed, perfected upon us. There is no need for another deen. Islam is our deen. It is the chosen deen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we understand the word of khatm. That khatm means finishing. Finish, prophethood is finished. Then we come upon the verse of Surah Al-Ahzab. Those special souls who deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَخْشَوْنَهُ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ This wow is only for tahseen and يَخْشَوْنَهُ is the khabar of الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ Those who deliver that message, they fear Allah and none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ حَسِيبًا Allah is enough to take their hisab and reckoning. Allah knows that what they had done, Allah will take their hisab on the day of Qiyamah. All the messengers will be summoned before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَوْمَ يَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ الرُّسُلُ فَيَقُولُ مَاذَا أُجِبْتُمْ قَالُوا لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْ تَعَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ all the messengers will be summoned by Allah in the Maidan of Hashar and they will have to prove that they had delivered that message. They will have to bring some witness and evidence that they delivered their message. In front of Allah, kisi ka kuch nahi chalega. Only Allah, Allah will question and everybody will have to answer reply. Isa alayhi salam will also be called. Is qal Allahu ya Isa ibn Maryam, anta qulta lil nasi takhizuni wa ummiya ilahaini min duni Allah. Did you tell people to worship you and take you as God and your mother as God besides me? Qala subhana. He will say on the day of Qiyamah, Oh Allah subhana, glory be to you, hallowed be you. Ma, ma yakunu li an aqula ma laysa li bihaq. It doesn't befit me to say something which is not my right. In kundu qultuhu faqad alimta. If such words came out of my lips, then you know better than me. Ta'alamu ma fi nafsi wa la alamu ma fi nafsi. You know what's inside me, I don't know what's inside you. This is a phrase. Wa la alamu ma fi nafsi. Inna ka anta alamu al-ghuyub. You are the knower of the unseen. مَا قُلْتُ لَهُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَمَرْتَنِي بِهِ أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ I only said what you instructed me to say. That worship Allah who is your Rabb and who is my Rabb. وَكُنْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ I used to keep a watchful eye over them as long as I was among them. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ When you called me over to you, you had your watchful eyes over them. وَأَنْتَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ And you are a witness over everything. You see everything yourself. So, Allah will summon all the prophets. Question them. They will be questioned on the day of Qiyamah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will also be questioned. And inshallah we will testify on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that yes, he delivered his message completely. He said, in that um, in Hajjatul Wada, when he gave that famous khutbah and speech, after that he said, "Innakum masulun anni, fama antum qailun." "Qalu nashhadu ya Rasulullah anna kaqad balqat al risala wa adayt al amana wa nasahat al umma." And Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "Allahum mashhad, Allahum mashhad, Allahum mashhad." Three times, raising his fingers towards the sky and lowering it down, that, "O oh Allah, bear witness! This whole congregation is saying that I have fulfilled my duty and delivered your message." So, in that message, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told him that, "You are final prophet." Let us think a little bit. Among that chain of Prophethood, 124,000. Is there any prophet who claimed to be the last prophet? Did Ibrahim ever say, I am the last prophet? Did Musa ever say, I am the last prophet? Did Isa say, I am the last prophet? No, nobody said, I am the final prophet. In fact, Ibrahim made dua for Rasulullah. Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasulam minhum. Isa alayhi salam gave the good news of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam wa mubashiram bi rasulin yati min ba'di ismuhu Ahmad no prophet said I am the last prophet the only prophet to claim khatm-i nabuwat is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam who said ala wa ana khatamun nabiyyin lo I am khatamun nabiyyin in fact in one hadith amazing he said إِنِّي لَمَكْتُوبٌ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَاتَمُ النَّبِيِّينَ وَإِنَّ آدَمْ لَمُنْجَدِلٌ فِي طِينَتِهِ I was noted down as the last prophet, the seal of the prophets. While Adam was still tossing and turning in that mitty and soil of his. 
Meaning that Ruh had not entered in his body yet. Before completing the creation of Adam a.s. Allah had noted, down, noted me down as Khatamun Nabiheen. khatm e was written there and then. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, is the only prophet to have claimed to be Khatamun Nabiheen, the final prophet. In many ahadith, we can go into ahadith like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فُضِّلْتُ عَلَى الْأَنْبِيَاءِ بِسِتِّنْ I have been given excellence, virtue over the other prophets in six ways. أُوْتِيْتُ جَوَامِعَ الْكَلِمْ I have been given succinct words. Short, simple sentences which have oceans of meanings. This is جَوَامِعُ الْكَلِمْ you can keep deriving meanings out of it. Rasulullah used to work, used to speak so nicely and softly, such beautiful words that the Sahaba could memorize his words. And they would love his speech, they would sit in his company, they would memorize everything he said. So, Jawami'ul Kalib and wa nusir to be Rab. He was given a special awe and inspiration by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had a special presence. Wherever he went, he had a presence, awe, inspiration. And وَجُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا The whole earth has been made for me as a masjid and a place of purification. Previous nations had to go to their place of worship, the synagogue, the church, to worship. They couldn't worship Allah in their homes. But ummat Muhammadiyah is allowed to worship wherever they, may, they are. This is why when we pray our salah at an airport or at a service station, the other community which see us, they are amazed. What is this man? Why is he worshiping me? He should be going to his uh, mosque to worship. They can't understand this. But Allah has made the whole earth a place of worship for us. We can worship wherever we want. And tahura, and we, if we can't find water, we can do tayammum. So it's a form of purification, the earth. And وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ يُبْعَثُ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ خَاصَّةً وَأُرْسِلْتُ إِلَىٰ الْخَلْقِ كَافَّةً The previous prophets were sent to their nations only. And I have been sent to the whole makhluq creation. This is why in the Quran you read يَا قَوْمْ أُعْبُدُ اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُ O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will always say, Ya Qawm, Ya Qawm, Ya Qawm. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ummati. He used to think about the whole Ummah. Rasulullah's message is for the whole world. Even Isa alayhi salam didn't claim to be universal prophet. He said, I have, been I have been sent to gather the scattered sheep of Banu Israel. So he was only prophet. Isa alayhi salam was only for Banu Israel, not the whole world. Only Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the universal prophet. He is the international prophet. The other prophets were regional, they were national for their community, their area, their region. And Rasulullah is for the whole world. He is for the Arab, he is for the Ajam. He is for the white, he is for the colored. He is for the Asian, the American, the Chinese, they, wherever they are, the whole world. Rasulullah is the prophet to all of them. And since he has been sent to the whole world, he's a universal, then we come on to the sixth quality, which is that Nabi and Prophets are finalized upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He has told us to carry on this message forward to the rest of the community. You are the best of nations. You have been brought out for the people. You instruct people to do good and stop them from vice. And you believe in Allah as you should believe. So this is khatm of Nabuwat. We understand Nabuwat. What is messengership and prophethood? We understand that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the final prophet. There is no new prophet to come after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa There is no need for a new prophet. If someone claims, we come to the third topic. Now, if someone claims to be a prophet after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he will be classed as a fabricator, liar, imposter. He is making things up. He can't be a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he has declared that this is my last prophet. 
If Rasulullah is saying that I am a prophet and then at the same time he is saying I am the last prophet, you have to believe in both things. You can't believe in one thing and deny the other thing. You can't say he is a prophet but he is not the seal of the prophets. If he is a prophet and he is saying I am seal of the prophets, then he is the seal of the prophets. So, if someone claims to be prophet after him, he will be classed as an imposter. There were some people during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam who when seeing the popularity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the spreading of his message, they also tried to gain some popularity in the society. They were maybe wealthy and because of their power and wealth, they used to uh, overpower and subdue the community and claim to be prophet. One of them was Musaylama Kazab, the other was Aswad Anasi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Last night I saw a dream that the treasures of the earth were brought before me and two golden bracelets were put on my hands and they became really heavy upon me and I was told to blow on them and I blew and they flew away and they disappeared. The meaning of that blowing and the disappearing is those two imposters who have appeared and they are causing some chaos and fitna. I have great hope that inshallah Allah will remove their fitna. And it so happened that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got rid of that fitna and chaos which they had uh, brought up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought that calmness again to the community and society. Aswadi Anasi, he was down south in Yemen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa governor of that area was taking care of the community. Aswadi Anasi, due to his power and his wealth, he somehow managed to kill that governor and then got control of things and he said, I am a prophet. And he used to have real huge force and guards around him and go out with his army and kill innocent Muslims and people were scared the way he was treating people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that who will deal with Aswad Anasi? There was this Sahabi whose name was Firoz al Daylami radiallahu anhu. He said, Ya Rasulullah, don't worry, I will go and somehow sort him out. Now, Aswad Anasi he killed, I think it was Bazan, who was the governor of that area, who had embraced Islam. And he had married the wife of that previous governor who was pretty handsome. So he had overpowered the wife as well, but she hated him because he ruined his, her whole life. So Firuz the Dailami was somehow relative to her and he contacted her as he went there, but he, his fort was, uh, you know, very strong, not, uh, people not able to penetrate inside it. Somehow, uh, she got in touch with Firoz Dailami and she said that if you do what I say, then inshallah I will get you to him. And at night, while the guards were looking around from one area behind, she called them and then she supplied the weapons and then Aswad Anasi finished him off. He got a hold, he went inside, got hold of him and finished him off. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was on his deathbed at the time and he said, Faza Firoz, Faza Firoz. Firoz has succeeded, Firoz has succeeded. That tyrant who was causing such chaos in that area has been finished off and alhamdulillah calmness came back within the society. Similar fate was suffered by Musaylam al-Kazzab, but after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, during the time of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu khalifa to Rasulullah, there was a huge battle with Banu Hanifa, and they were very uh, warriors to the end. They, they used to fight for their, you know, to, till the last breath. And Sahaba suffered many casualties during that battle. And Wahshi ibn Harb radiallahu anhu, who had killed Sayyiduna Hamza radiallahu anhu in the battle of Uhad happened to kill Musaylama Kazzab as well. After that he used to say that 
I killed the best person when I was a jahil and I killed the worst person after embracing Islam. Maybe Allah will forgive me for my mistakes. So, imposters came at that time. During the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, when as soon as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, this hawa of irtidad spread around. And some also who came up claiming to be Prophet. Tulayha ibn Khuwaylid Asadi Sijah al Aslamiya. But Alhamdulillah, their fitnas were all um, annihilated, finished off. Tulayha did Tawbah, Sijah also did Tawbah. They both embraced Islam and the society accepted them. Okay, as long as you do Tawbah, you are our brothers and sisters, we have nothing against you. And they repented and the community took them back. They made a mistake. Along the centuries, we see people like Mutanabbi claiming to be Prophet and going around, running around from one area to the other, finally ending up somewhere in Khurasan, and he couldn't stay there for long, so he retracted his claims, and he was allowed back to Iraq, and he came back to his hometown, and he said, I, I repent, I'm, I'm not a prophet, I was just uh, lying, fabricating things. In fact, during the time of Mamunul Rashid, you know, before understanding this, why does a person claim to be a prophet? Prophethood is not something, you know, light. It, 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 it's something major. Why? What happens to a person? Why does he claim to be a prophet? It seems that these people somehow become paranoid. This paranoia, something with psychic. So, and they, this type of, and they just sit there, they start daydreaming, thinking. And then they feel, oh, something is happening to me. Jibril is coming to me. And Jibril is bringing wahi to me. And they say, I am a prophet. And they start saying things. Now, not all of them gain prominence. But some uh, do gain prominence. Like, for example, I remember about 20 years ago, in our Manchester area, the chief constable of Greater Manchester Police claimed to be a prophet. He said, I am a prophet of God. Now at that time, the Sun newspaper mocked him. You know, they all, for f four many days, all papers, they all mocking him so much. That after a few days, he says, sorry, sorry, it was my mistake, something happened to me. So similarly, during the time of Mamunu Rashid, this person came and he said, I am a prophet. Now Mamunu Rashid was a very jolly person. He used to joke a lot. He was the king at the time, but he was a very jolly person. So... He, that, that imposter was brought before Mamunul Rashid the Khalif. So Mamunul Rashid asked him, are you a prophet? I said, yes, I am a prophet. What have you got that in your hands? He said, this is my staff, stick. So Mamunul Rashid said, you know Musa alayhi salam, he used to throw his stick and it would become a snake. You throw your stick and turn it into a snake, I will believe you. I was just joking. So he was also a bit clever. He said, Mamun Rashid, Khalifa, what are you saying, man? When did Musa a.s. stuff turn into a snake? When Firon claimed, Ana Rabbukumul A'la, I am your highest Rabb. You claim Ana Rabbukumul A'la and I will change it into a, 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 a snake. And Mamun Rashid started laughing. <laughs> and he said, Tabakar, 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 He said, okay, okay, sorry, my mistake, I am repenting. So this type of paranoia happens, they start daydreaming and then start making these claims. When we go over the stage of history, we see people like Baha'u'llah, uh, among the firqa of Baha'iyya, maybe 200 years ago. They were in Iran and this firqa, he, he, first he was called Baba and then Baha'u'llah and he, he, he started claiming to prophet and then he claimed to be God as well. That God has come inside me. And there are people out there who believe in him. That yes, he is God and he is like that and he is like that. And a few years back, over a hundred years, within our Indian subcontinent, this person, Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani, he claims to be a prophet. I am also a prophet of God. How does he claim to be a prophet? Now we see, Hazrat Mufti Shafi Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi, writes in Khatmi Nabuwat that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani 
went through three stages. His first period is up to 1891. And his second period is up to 1899. And then the third period is up to 1907 or 8 in which he died. So before 1891, he was like a normal person, normal Muslim. He used to, he, he, he had studied a little bit of Arabic language, Urdu books, and he had a little bit of knowledge of deen. He was not a Hafiz or a complete Alim or anything. He had a little bit of knowledge. He was like a normal person. And he used to behave like a normal person. And he used to believe that Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Khatamun Nabiyyin. He is the last prophet. He used to declare that. He wrote some books in which he himself wrote that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Khatamun Nabiyyin. After 1891, he had some thoughts and he claimed to be Imam Mahdi. When he read some ahadith in which Imam Mahdi is mentioned, he said, I am Imam Mahdi. Now, who is Imam Mahdi? Mahdi is a title. Mahdi means the rightly guided personality. It's not a name, it's a title. And the name of that personality is mentioned in the hadith of Mishkatul Masabih that لا تزال الدنيا قائمة أو كما قال الإسلام حتى يملك العرب رجل من أمتي يواطئ اسمه اسمي ويواطئ اسم أبيه اسم أبي that that personality Imam Mahdi will come and his name will be same as my name and his father's name will be same as my father's name meaning his name will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah and Al Mahdi will be his title we understand from the collection of hadith. Hadrat Maulana Hussain Ahmad Madani Rahmatullahi Alayhi wrote a nice book, Alamatul Mahdi, in which he mentioned 33 signs of Imam Mahdi. That he will be from the Arabs, not from the non-Arabs. Then he will be from the Quraysh, not from the non-Quraysh. And he will be a Sayyid, meaning from the descendants of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his name will be Muhammad. And his father's name will be Abdullah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to say that he won't claim to be Mahdi. He will have been born in Medina Munawwara. He will have grown up in Medina Munawwara. The community of Medina Munawwara will have known him. And he will have stayed there for a period of 40 years. And after that, when he's reached that maturity, there will be so much fitna, fasad, chaos in the earth that people will look to, for someone who can uh, control and who can get everybody to unite everybody together and then control the uh, Muslim Ummah. So he, people will go to approach him and say that you take reign, you deserve this, you are a great alim, great scholar of deen and you are very respected from the Sadat family, you have the ability to do this. He will say, I don't, I, this is not my job, I'm sorry. People will try to persuade him but he will run away and he will go to Makkah Mukarramah. And over here in Makkah Mukarramah, he will be, after performing his Hajj, Umrah, Tawaf, whatever, he will be sitting between, Rasulullah mentioned that place where the Bayat will take place. He will be sitting between Hajar Aswad and Maqam Ibrahim. If you see Maqam Ibrahim is here on your right and Hajar Aswad is on the left and in between is the door of Kaaba. So uh, beneath the door of Kaabatullah, between Hajar Aswad and Maqam Ibrahim, Bayat will take place. The Sulaha and Ulama and Ahlullah of that time, they will be inspired, ilham, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Imam Mahdi is there, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, give your bayat and pledge your allegiance to him and get unite behind him. So they will come and persuade him, force him to take the bayat. And then he will take the bayat. Now we see the many signs which restrict the appearance, emergence of Sayyiduna Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, that he will never claim for himself. And he will be from the Arabs, not from the non-Arabs. Now, when this person claimed to be Imam Mahdi, first of all, he was a non-Arab. He was not from the Arab community. He was not a Sayyid. His name was not Muhammad. His father's name was not Abdullah. And he, was not, he had never visited Makkah nor Medina. Imam Mahdi will be born in Medina. And he will be, bayat will be done to him in Makkah Mukarrama. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, Imam Mahdi will fill the earth. With qistan wa adlan ba'dama muli az zulman wa jawran. He will fill the earth with insaf and justice and he will remove the oppression and tyranny which has, fill, which has filled the earth. Now, what did this personality do? 
Where did he bring any justice? No justice, no removing of peace, uh, sorry, no removing of injustice and oppression tyranny. So the signs are not there. He, his, his claim was false. And so anybody else who claims to be a Mahdi, his claim will be false, whosoever it might be. The signs are there. Everything is mentioned in Sahih Ahadith. So his first claim was to be Imam Mahdi in the year 1891. After that, as years passed on, he claimed to be Masih Ma'ud. He now he is now progressing. He is saying, "I am not just Imam Mahdi. I am also Masih Ma'ud. Masih Ma'ud. Masih means Messiah. Masih is the title of Sayyiduna Isa, ala Nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. Isa is the name, son of Maryam, and Masih is the title. Masih means Mamsuh bil Khair, one." Who, who is full of khair and goodness, who has from head to toe, goodness has been wiped over him and he has been, he has been provided and he has been covered in goodness. He never does anything evil, any bad. He is all, he's always recommending good and khair. This is Masih, Mamsuh bil khair. So this Masih title is exclusively for Sayyiduna Isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. And Maw'ud means pr promised. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has promised that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will come down. Now when will Isa alayhi salam come down? Rasulullah mentioned the signs of that as well. That Isa alayhi salam will come down when Dajjal will appear. Signs are there in the hadith of Muslim. In fact in the Quran the indication is towards Isa alayhi salam's nuzul in the ayat of 25th Sipara. Surah Al-Zukhruf, wherein Allah said, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ فَلَا تَمْتَرُنَّ بِهَا وَاتَّبِعُونَ هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ One qirat over here is, وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ Surely Isa's coming down or Isa a.s. himself is a sign of the uh, Qiyamah drawing closer. فَلَا تَمْتَرُنَّ بِهَا Do not be in doubt with regards to Qiyamah and the Day of Judgment. وَاتَّبِعُونَ Follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ This is Sirat al-Mustaqeem, the straight path. So Isa alayhi wa sallam is coming down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا that when people attempted to murder Sayyiduna Isa alayhi wa sallam Allah raised him high above the heavens and he is kept over there our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa saw him, met him, greeted him in the night of Mi'raj. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned his description and his, he gave his features. He will be of a fair skin, medium height. He has beautiful hair up to his earlobes and he's fair complex. It looks like he's just come out of a shower and his, his face is gleaming and very nice and humble personality. Rasulullah mentioned that and he is there. And when the time will come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him down. How does Allah keep him there without food, without water, without sleep? In the same way as Allah keeps the malaika and the angels up there. In the same way as Allah kept the ashab kahf for 300 years in their cave, sleeping there without food, without water, without sleep. Allah look after them. Allah can keep Isa alayhi salam there for as long as he wants. He will bring Isa alayhi salam down. And Imam Mahdi will have appeared. And Imam Mahdi will have approached from Makkah Mukarramah with the army. People will try and come and uh, attack Mahdi and quash him. And the hadith says that uh, an army, a huge army will be sent to defeat Imam Mahdi. But they will be swallowed by the earth in al Baida between Makkah and Medina Munawwara. That massive army who will be coming to attack, this will be a karamat and miracle of Imam Mahdi that the earth will open up and swallow them. Imam Mahdi will advance and he will come towards the area of Sham and towards Baytul Maqdis. And it is in that area when after many many wars and battles when he will be trying to establish peace and in that area. Whatever is happening today over there as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring peace to those lands very quickly. May Allah have mercy upon our brothers and our sisters who are persecuted and tortured in those lands. Imam Mahdi will come and try and bring that peace. However, as soon as a little bit of peace arrives, what's going to happen? The Jal will appear. The Jal will appear. And now nobody will have the power to tackle the Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Sayyiduna Isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. He will come down and people are, will be ready, getting ready for Salatul Asr. 
and the whole masjid will be filled with the Muslims and Isa Islam will come. People will be expecting him. Just as today we know about Isa Islam in Quran and Hadith, people at that time will also know about Isa Islam through Quran and Hadith. So they will be waiting for him, expecting him that this is Imam Mahdi, his time is nigh, the Jal has come, so he's about to come anytime now, he's going to be here. So when Isa Islam will come down, Rasulullah said he will come resting on the wings of two malaika, two angels. He will come to the uh, wide minaret of the eastern side of the Jami' of Dimashq, Damascus. And he will call for a ladder from the minaret and he will come down and people will have formed rows ready for Salatul Asr. And, and he, when he is appearing, he, 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 will be, he, will have, he will be appearing like someone who's just had a shower and water will drip from his face when he will look down. He will come straight down inside the masjid and people will make way and he will go to the musalla of Imam. Imam Mahdi will come behind and tell him, Hazrat, you go and lead the salah. And Sayyiduna Isa salam will say, no, 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 this iqamat was done for you, so you lead it. Uh, today, I will pray behind you. This is to show that Isa salam has today, he has not come as a new prophet. He has come as a follower of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That is why he will perform the salah behind a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Then Isa salam will, after Salatul Asr, take things in control and greet the Muslims. And the next day battle will happen. Allah will give him some miracles. The hadith say those miracles. Especially that miracle in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that if kafirs come to attack him, they will not be able to come near him. And wherever his breath reaches, the kafir will melt. Melt and die there and then. And his breath will reach where his sight reaches. So nobody will be able to come around him within his sight. He will go after the jal. The jal will run away. The jal will run away. And if Isa salam left him, he would, he would melt just like salt melts in water. However, Isa salam will go after him and catch him at a place called Babe Lud, the gateway of Lud. And there Isa salam will kill him with a dagger and he will be finished off. Isa salam will bring that dagger and show it to people that this Dajjal has been finished and killed. killed. And then people will rest. So this is what Sayyiduna Isa salam's biography, a little bit, he will do what he will do when he comes down. This is Masih Mawood, Isa salam's, the promised Messiah who's going to come down. Now, this person claims to be the promised Messiah, that I am the promised Messiah. During this stage, second stage. And then in 19, maybe this is the second stage between 1899 and 1901. And after 1901, he claims to be a prophet. He said, I'm not just a messiah. Now I am a mustaqil prophet, a prophet on my own. I am a new prophet. And how does he claim to be prophet? Hazrat Maulana Abul Hassan Ali Nadwi rahmatullahi has written a book about Khatm Nabuwat. And he says that it was not he who said, I am a prophet. He had a masjid in his area, Qadiyan, where he used to worship. And he used to go there for Juma Salah. And he would not lead the Juma Salah, he had someone else leading it. So the Khatib who was giving the Khutbah, he was delivering a speech before Juma Salah. And in that speech, he said that, do you not know the value of our Hazrat Ji? Our Hazrat Ji is not only Imam Mahdi, he is not only Masih Mawood. Allah has blessed him with prophethood and he is a Nabi as well. Now he was getting ready, putting his new clothes on uh, for Juma Salah. And he heard that, <coughs> and he got feel chuffed. Wow, I am a prophet now. <laughs> and now, after that, he comes and he says, people greet him. Yes, sir, you are a prophet. Yes, I am a prophet. So, there was, this prophet, he did not come to him through Jibreel alayhi salam. Like Jibreel alayhi salam came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in And told him, you are a prophet of Allah. And this is Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. He did not, the prophet who did not come to him like other prophets, he said, the Prophet who came to the Khatib of Juma, who just blurted it out that this is our Hazrat's Muqam. And he said, yes, yes, that's me. So this is how he claimed to be a Prophet. And after that, he did not, he did not just claim to be a Nabi. He said, I am a Nabi who has surpassed Muhammadur Rasulullah as well. I have gone ahead of him. And all those miracles which Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given, 
I have been given all those miracles. And not only that, the miracles of those prophets who came before Muhammad, all the mu'ajizat and miracles have been given to me as well. And he started claiming these things. And when he said these things, people started getting away from him. He had two wives. One wife believed in him, other wife denied him. You are not a prophet, I know you from top head to toe. I have been with you all my life. You can't be a prophet. If you look at his appearance, his, his, his health, the mannerisms, the way he would speak, many times he would swear, he would insult and abuse people. He would say, those who don't believe in me are kanjariki awlad. They are the children of prostitutes. They are worse than the Christians and the Jews. These types of words which come out of him, his lips. Now you tell me, can a sound-minded person say such things? Never mind someone claiming to be a prophet. And in this way, he made these claims, went on, continued in this way, until 1908, in which he died. We don't want to discuss the manner in which he died. He was a heavy diabetic patient. In fact, in his biography, his own people who have written about him, they write that our Hazrat Sahab was very bhola bhala. He was very innocent. And he said, because of the, his nature of diabetic, uh, he, his sugar would go low and he would need to go to the toilet urine, uh, latrine uh, uh, very often. So in one pocket he used to keep gurki dalis. You know what they say in gurku English? Uh, gur, a sweet, huh? a sugar cane ka sweet gur jo hota hai wo. And in the, huh? huh? Blessis. Jo gud bhi hai. Or in the other pocket he used to keep small small stones for his tinja because in those days oh, they couldn't find water everywhere. So he used to do his tinja with uh, stones. So in his basket, in his pocket, one pocket would be this, one pocket would be that. Sometimes our Bhola Bala Hazrat would instead, sugar would go down, instead of eating the good, he would eat the Dela of Stinja. And other times for Stinja, he would use that good. So now this is, his, his own people are writing this. I'm not saying this, I'm quoting from his own books. So this is how his condition is. And finally, he passes away in a state of severe illness and he had developed diarrhea and he suffered a painful death which has been collected in the books. We don't want to go into that. Afterwards, let me mention, you know, the fourth thing which I said. Some people who believed in him, some didn't. Those who didn't, among them was his wife, herself, and many around him. After he passes away, there was a personality called Maulana Lal Akhtar. He, in the beginning, believed in him. He was a very eloquent person, young man studying in a college. When these people, the Ahmadiyya movement, they went around in colleges and they had a special appeal in them the way they spoke and they could convince anyone. So, Mawlana Ala Akhtar listened to one of their speeches, he was convinced and he also spoke a little bit. So, they looked at, oh, this student is useful for us. They took him on board and they took him to a special university. They spent lots of money after him. They uh, tutored him for seven years and then he started speaking on behalf of the Ahmadiyya movement. He spoke for another seven years. Some of his life is passing through. However, he says himself that I had some niggling feeling, that doubt in my heart. That, is this true? Is this correct what I am saying? So he says that one night I was sleeping and I saw a dream. That there is this huge compound surrounded by a barbed wire. And uh, many people inside. And I noticed that they were all from our Ahmadiyya movement group. And he says that some, some of them whom I knew, I said, what is this? Why are we surrounded over here? And he says, well, we have been surrounded over here by our enemies. 
and there is no escape from here. The only person who can help us is our Hazrat Sahib lying over there. And we can't get to him. So he says that I went around looking here and there and I saw a little bit of space underneath a fence. So I pushed that fence, kicked it and then somehow I sneaked through it and I rushed towards Hazrat Sahib who was resting on a bed and he had covered his head with blanket. So he says, I approached and I said, Hazrat Sahib, your community is in a real mess and they need your help to get out of that frustration. So you should do something. So he opened his face and he said, I myself am in a real terrible state. What can I do? How can I help you? And he says his face had changed into some, something like a khinzir. And there was a stench coming out of his mouth. And because of that, I just woke up. I thought it must be a nightmare. I didn't pay much attention to it. However, he says that uh, I started reading his books in a critical way. With an open mind rather than with his love. So I started reading with a critical mind. And after a few days, I see another dream. I see a dream that there is a rope which is tied around my neck. And that rope is a, a, a very long and is, is tied around uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. And he is pulling me and I am dragging behind him. And a personality in white clothes, Nurani, beautiful appearance emerges and he says to me, where are you going? And I said, I am following this Nabi. And he said, he's not a Nabi. There's, there's no Nabi after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He's not taking you to Jannah. He's taking you to Jahannam. And he says, I asked him, does anyone like to go to Jahannam? Why would someone claim to be a Nabi if he's not a Nabi? So the personality said, well, Musaylam al-Kazzab claimed to be a Nabi. He wanted to go to Jahannam. So this person can also be heading that way. So I started thinking for a moment and the person disappeared. After a while, again he appeared. And he said, look, can you see that red, red flames ahead of you? That is the fire of Jahannam. That's where he's going. You better sort yourself out quickly. And he says, he hit that rope and the rope snapped. And I fell back. I said, I woke up from that dream. And I said, oh, now we have to look carefully. And I studied the books carefully. And now I started realizing, oh, and then I realized everything. And I did Tawbah. I did Tawbah, Astaghfirullah. And he said that I went to the Muslim community. And I said that I want to do Tawbah. Please accept my Tawbah. And he went out of that society, went to the Muslims, claimed his, he repented. This repentance is good. If someone realized the haqq, he should accept. I remember something else. Some time ago, I went to one place in Ohio. <coughs> My friend is an imam there. And he told me that within our com committee members, there was a person who was affiliated with the Ahmadiyya movement. <laughs> He was a doctor, very influential. People didn't know his beliefs. Somehow one day he came into the open. So people, the committee members asked him, is this true? You are Ahmadi? He said, yes, I am Ahmadi. I believe in him as a Nabi. So another doctor sahab in the community committee said that why you have to do Tawbah. Otherwise you have to get out of the committee. We don't want such a person in our masjid committee. So he said, no, you can't do anything. I am a founding member. I am this and that. You can't kick me out. So he said, we'll have to do a case on you. They did a case on him. Nobody was ready to go to the court. And the doctor sub went to the court. And uh, he went a few times. Appeared in the court. He is putting his delight that we are Muslims. And here he is putting the lie that they are out of the fold of Islam. This happened. Few times they went there. After that, he started studying. 
and he realized that this is wrong. So he said to the community members, that I, I'm, I'm repenting, I no longer have those beliefs. He said, okay, no problem, we'll accept you. He said, I've been to, I've been to ISNA, Islamic Society of North America, and they have given me this certificate of Tawqa. So these doctors have said that, I am sorry, you, you, your, your, your situation has spread within the community, society, everybody knows now. So you can't just do your Tawbah, get certificate from there. You have to do your Tawbah in front of the whole congregation on Friday. Then we will accept your Tawbah. So doctors have said, yeah, don't put me through all that. He said, no, you have to do that. He said, okay. So on the following Friday, he said he came. And after Salat finished, the doctors have got up. And he said, by yo, ek minute ke liye And then he made the announcement. Our respected friend has done Tawbah and he has repented. He now believes that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani was not a Nabi. He was an imposter. He lied upon Allah. He lied upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was not a prophet. He has beliefs are now correct. And we should all embrace him. He got up and he declared Kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And Muhammadur Rasulullah is final Nabi. There is no Nabi to come after him. And Dr. Sahab was the first person to embrace him. And the whole masjid did muanaqa and accepted. And alhamdulillah, they were on the right track after that. Maulana Lal Hussein Akhtar also repented. And he did tawbah. Now what happens? The Ahmadiyya movement community, community are really angry and furious. We spend so much money after you and you are betraying us. And they start coming and giving him some bribes. That we will give you 30,000 rupees of that time. 15,000 now, 15,000 later. And all you have to do is stop this preaching and talking about our mazhab and our beliefs. And Mawlana al Hussain Sahib said, take your money away, I don't want money. Then they started threatening him. There were some attacks on him. Sometimes, you know, for his life. Few times. Then Mawlana Habibur Rahman Kandalvi Rahmatullahi Alayhi came to the Lahore area. And he said to the Muslim community, Bhai ye jawan admi hai, bichara itni mehnat kar raha hai. Or tum isko protection nahi de rahe ho. Maulana sahab said, Iski life pe itne hamle ho chuke hai. Ab tum jo hai, Sare majmi ko jama karo. Or mein usme bayan karta hu, Announce karta hu. Announce ho gaya. Or Lahore ke arene mein, 40,000 ka majma jama ho gaya. 40,000 people. And Maulana Habibur Rahman sahab told Maulana Lal Hussain Akhtar to give a speech. And he gave a beautiful speech. And the whole majma gathering was mesmerized by his speech in uh, refuting the claims of Mirza Qadiani and the Ahmadiyya movement. And after that, Mawlana Habibur Rahman stood up and he gave a beautiful speech. And he said to them that you are going after the life of this person. Remember, if you, if you hurt him, if you kill him, then we will take revenge from a thousand of you. It is at that time that they stopped attacking him. And then Mawlana Lalo Sensa was relieved. So, this is the story of repentance of Hazrat Murana, Lal Hussain Akhtar Rahmatullahi Alayhi and of the Dr. Sahab as well. My dear brothers, we are saying that these are some people who were around him. We have to remember that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final prophet, no prophet to come after him. If someone does claim to be a prophet, then he will be lying. In fact, you know what Allah says in the Quran? وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنِ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أَوْ قَالَ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ وَلَمْ يُوحَ إِلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ Who is a greater zalim than a person who claims, who fabricates a lie upon Allah? Or who says that revelation and wahi has come upon me when no wahi has come to him? And who says, I will also reveal the like of that which Allah has revealed upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And Allah said, if you were to see the status and the state of such imposters and such zalims, while they are in the pangs of death, and the malaika have spread out their hands, and they are saying, deliver your souls. Today, you will be punished with the punishment of disgrace. Because you used to be haughty and you used to, used to fabricate lies upon Allah and you used to turn away and show pride against the uh, ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So the greatest fabrication upon Allah is of that person who says, I am a prophet and I am receiving wahi. They were so wicked, they would say, Jibreel has just been sitting with me. Now such a person, why would Jibreel come to such a person? You look at his life, you look at his characteristics, you look at his behavior, you look at his language, and you look at his lies, his prophecies. He used to make prophecies, this is going to happen, and exactly the opposite would happen. You are going to have a khatme nabuwat conference next week. Ulama will be here. They will be talking about that. Come to the jalsa. This jalsa is in preparation for that. And listen to their topics and the way they explain to you the finality of Rasul, a prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So this is what happens and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this. Some people say that in one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this Qur'an is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Muhammad was to claim anything upon Allah which Allah has not said, if he was to add any words in the Qur'an, something which Allah did not say, then we would get hold of him with our right hand, meaning with the powerful. Our right hand is normally more powerful than left. <coughs> with great power we will seize him. And we will cut off his wateen, his jugular vein. And no one will be able to protect him. So from here, some Qadianis and Ahmadis say that our Hazrat lived for so long time, that means he was a prophet, his jugular vein was not cut off. They misquote and misrepresent that hadith. The, the, the ayat. The ayat is regarding Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Not regarding anybody else to come until the day of Qiyamah. Allah is saying about this prophet. That if this prophet did this, then we would seize him immediately. Others, Allah would give them time, respite. Because Allah works through means. So these people are going to come. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa prophesies them. سَيَكُونُ فِي أُمَّتِي ثَلَاثُونَ كَذَّابُونَ دَجَّالُونَ كُلُّهُمْ يَزْعُمُ أَنَّهُ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ so these kazzab are going to come. So these were his claims. He passed away, he died in the year 1908. After that, his khalifas came after him, Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmood, so and so Mirza. At the moment, this Ahmadiyya movement has their base in UK, in London. And while I was coming over here and I was studying for the lecture, I went onto their website, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Movement, and I noticed on there that they have removed these claims of Nabuwat, and they only say that he was Masih Mahmud. They don't say that he was a prophet now. Maybe their stance has changed for some reason. And they say, they give a photo, his photo, and they say, we have so many millions of followers in 200 countries, and we have so much this and that. And he was Masih Mawud. In fact, you know some absurd claims. There is another claim on there that Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salatu was salam did not die on that cross. He was alive and he went to Kashmir and he stayed in Kashmir and died in Kashmir and his grave is in Kashmir. You go on that website, it's there. You can read it. How? He said that, well, if you put someone on a cross, he doesn't die in hours, it takes him days to die. So the Romans put him on the cross and then they went away. But the disciples brought him down quickly and he was still alive. But there was no proper medicine in that area of Palestine. So they took him, carried him from there and they traveled and they traveled and they traveled and they carried him, brought him to Kashmir and there was so much medical treatments here that they treated him and then he spent his life over here and then he died and over here in Kashmir and this is his grave. And they give a photo that Mazar Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam fi Kashmir. This is his Mazar in Kashmir. So this is, and I fail to understand if Isa alayhi salam died in Kashmir, if his Qabr was there, then how does that make Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani Masih Maud? What is the connection and link between that? There is no link between it. He died over there, let's say for example for argument's sake. Then how does it make him a prophet after 2000 years? So, uh, these type of baseless claims are on there. You have to be very careful when these people speak to you. They are very sharp 
and they you know try to wriggle their ways around and make things up you have to understand that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the final prophet no nabi to come after him imam mahdi alaihi salam isa alaihi salam and all the signs which i have mentioned to you the mirza ghulam muhammad qadiani was not imam mahdi he was not masih maud he was not a nabi and all the claims he made were fabrications lies he was not even a proper human being you know something is been mentioned in their own akhbar of al fazl which we used to come out of qadian that mirza ghulam muhammad qadiani used to drink as well and he used to fornicate as well there was there is a story in there which mentioned which i read in the khatm in abu books that he had some murid and he said one day to him that your young daughter can you send her with so and so uh, thing tomorrow uh, night in fact ladies used to come and press his legs at night can that be allowed our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never touched the hand of a strange lady even while doing bayat he would say my bayat with you and allegiance is just through words i cannot touch your body and over here ladies used to press his legs at night and his friend who was his murid who believed in him he sent his daughter and the daughter was passing by a friend's house and she said can you come with me to hazrat sahab's house as well and she the both of them came and they delivered that parcel and they went after a few days he says you know your daughter brought someone with her so do tell her to come alone don't bring anyone else now the next time she comes alone and now she says she he locks the doors from inside and he rapes her and she says that there was a smell coming out of what people drink why would a person send his own daughter ignorance sheer ignorance jahalat people of that area were mesmerized by him and they were overpowered even they know that this is happening but they can't control things so a person of this this type this attitude and this behavior this character how can such a person claim to be a prophet they so we have to under, understand this carefully my dear brothers and if someone uh, claims to be of this type then we should uh, explain to him try and get him to you know, understand and do tauba like our respected dr sahab did tauba like maulana lal husain akhtar sahab did tauba if they do tauba they will be our friends if they don't if they are stubborn then leave them alone let them do what they want to do we have nothing to do with them as it's been declared many years ago that they are out of the fold of islam a person can only stay inside the fold of islam if he believes each and every single word of the quran and the hadith of our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qurani ayat ahadith un nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam are mutawatir with regards to this and you know they have reached a level of consensus and there is ijma upon this fact in fact the ulama have said that wada'a nabuwwati ba'da nabiyyina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kufrun bil ijma' in fatawa hindiya fatawa shamiya everywhere it's written in fact imam abu hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi used to say that if a person claims to be a prophet after rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and someone genuinely asks him for a dalil what is your proof of a prophet to inquire about it then imam abu hanifa rahmatullah says that this inquirer also becomes a kafir because he has a doubt in the khatm nabuwwat of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is why he is asking for a dalil i'm not talking about mamun rashid he was only uh, trying to play around and that uh, pagal did toba i'm talking about someone who genuinely asks for a dalil that you give me a proof show me a miracle and i will accept you as a nabi then even if that person doesn't show an, any miracle this person still becomes a kafir so it is the denying and th- this is the way among their community there are two types of people one who believe him to be a nabi others who believe him to be masih maud which is uh, their stance at the moment both are out of the fold of islam it is necessary fard compulsory to believe that mirza ghulam muhammad qadiani was uh, an impostor he was a kazab and he was not a prophet and this is our aqida with regards to khatm nabuwwat i hope i have explained everything and you understand may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the correct belief and keep us steadfast on sirat al mustaqim till the day we die alhamdulillah we have been having khatm nabuwwat conferences since 1985 the first khatm nabuwwat conference was in wembley conference hall in 1985 and uh, it was conducted by 
Hazrat Maulana Abdul Hafiz Sahib. And the second year Khatm e was conducted by our Hazrat Maulana Yusuf Mutala Sahib. Alhamdulillah, 5-10,000 people gathered over there. We still remember those beautiful days when we used to travel by coaches. And Alhamdulillah, ulama used to come and they used to explain to us. I remember in one of the Khatm e conferences, Maulana Ziaul Qasimi, Rahmatullah Ali Murhum. He came on the stage and he said, I have been talking about the seerat of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout my life. And I have always delivered the talk on seerat of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with wuzu. I have never been be wuzu when talking about the seerah of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today I have been given the topic of talking about Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani's life and I don't have wuzu. <laughs> So he made the whole congregation smile and then he went on and explained in the beautiful way. And many ulama's, Maulana Qari Ajmal Qadri Rahmatullah Ali. I remember in one of his bayan, his whole bayan was upon the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The beauty of the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does Muhammad mean? It's a beautiful name. Allah preserved that name until Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came. Before that, nobody named their children Muhammad. He was the first person to be named Muhammad. Allah protected it. So, لَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ سَمِيَّةً Muhammad means the oft-praised one, the one who is praised by everyone in a beautiful manner all the time. This is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, And you can't utter the name Muhammad until both your lips meet twice in, in the meme of Muhammad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah kept this miracle in the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He recited the couplet, لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ فِي الْأَنَامِ فَضِيلَةٌ وَجُمْلَتُهَا مَجْمُوعَةٌ لِمُحَمَّدِي مَا إِنْ مَدَحْتُ مُحَمَّدًا بِمَقَالَتِي وَلَكِنْ مَدَحْتُ مَقَالَتِي بِمُحَمَّدِي Every Nabi has a virtue and excellence among the Nabis. And all of those are collected in our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I have not praised Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through my words, but I have praised my speech through the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَا إِنْ مَدَحْتُ مُحَمَّدًا بِمَقَالَتِي وَلَكِنْ مَدَحْتُ مَقَالَتِي بِمُحَمَّدِي This is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, we always hear about the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One Abdul Ghafoor sahab was talking about the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Study his seerah, how nice person he was and how he is, you know, adapt his lifestyle. Then we will understand khatm e of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on sirat al mustaqim till the day we die. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give hidayah to the whole community give them understanding to muslims and non-muslims alike to the to those even those who are in the ahmadiyya movement may allah give them hidayat as well we make dua for the yahud and nasara why should we not make dua for them the allah give them hidayat as well give them the correct understanding bring them closer to the deen and islam and let them realize the khatm and of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and bring them to the correct aqeedah this is the dua that we should be making may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and be pleased with us so <laughs> yeh ختم نبوت جو ہے دوستو بزرگو واقعی بڑا عجیب یہ ہے اللہ مان رشا کشمیری رحمت اللہ علیہ کی آخری لائف جو ہے وہ ختم نبوت میں ہی گزری ہے ان سے مقابلے میں اور کہا کرتے تھے کہ شاید یہ ایک سہارا ہے اللہ کے ہاں نجات کا ذریعہ اللہ پاک جو ہے ہمیں بھی اس بہانے سے کچھ نجات کا سبب بنا دے اور نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی صحیح اور سچی عقیدت اور محبت ہم کو نصیب فرمائے اور ختم نبوت کا عقیدہ ہمارا سٹرانگ اور مضبوط کرا دے یہ بہت ضروری ہے تاکہ ہم اپنے بچوں کو بھی سمجھائیں اگر ہم یہ ہمارے ہی پاس ایڈوکیشن نہیں ہوا تو بچوں کو کیسے سمجھائیں گے ہم تو ہمیں صحیح بات سمجھ پڑی ہو تو ہم اپنے بچوں کو بھی سمجھائیں گے تاکہ ہمارے بچے کہیں بہک نہ جائیں اور کہیں گڑبڑ سربر چیزوں میں نہ پڑ جائیں اللہ پاک ہمارے بچوں کے بھی دین ایمان کی حفاظت فرمائے درو شریف پڑھ لیں سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أن نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم لك الحمد ولك الشكر اللهم لك الحمد ولك الشكر اللهم لك الحمد ولك الشكر اللهم لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك اللهم لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد بعد الرضا ولك الحمد أبدا اللهم لك الحمد حمدا دائما مع دوامك
وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ حَمْدًا خَالِدًا مَا خُلُودِكَ وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ حَمْدًا لَا مُنْتَهَا لَهُ دُونَ مَشِيَّتِكَ وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ حَمْدًا لَا يُرِيدُ قَائِلُهُ إِلَّا رِضَاكَ وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ عِنْدَ طَرْفَةِ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ وَتَنَفُّسِ كُلِّ نَفَسٍ اللَّهُمَّ لَكَ الْحَمْدُ كَمَا أَنْتَ أَهْلُهُ وَلَكَ الشُّكْرُ كَمَا أَنْتَ أَهْلُهُ وَلَكَ الثَّنَاءُ كَمَا أَنْتَ أَهْلُهُ فَصَلِّ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ كَمَا أَنْتَ أَهْلُهُ وَافْعَلْ بِنَا مَا أَنْتَ أَهْلُهُ فَإِنَّكَ أَهْلُ التَّقْوَى وَأَهْلُ الْمَغْفِرَةِ اللَّهُمَّ صَلِّ وَسَلِّمْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا وَمَوْلَانَا مُحَمَّدٍ عَبْدِكَ وَرَسُولِكَ النبي الأمي نبي الرحمة كما تحب وترضى عدد ما تحب وترضى كل ما ذكره الذاكرون وكل ما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والآفات وتغضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك عدد الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعض الممات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على سيدنا سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة تكون لك رضا وله جزاء ولحقه أداء وأعطه الوسيلة والفضيلة والمقام المحمود الذي وعدت وجزه عنا ما هو أهله وجزه أفضل ما جازيت نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته وصل على جميع إخوانه من النبيين والصالحين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين اللهم اغفر لجميع أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم تجاوز عن أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الله اللهم فرج الكرب عن أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم استر أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اجبر أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أصلح أحوال أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وألف بين قلوبهم وأصلح ذات بينهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها أجمعين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين المضطهدين المظلومين في فلسطين وفي الشام وفي برما وفي بنغالا وفي أفغان وفي جميع البلاد يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم نصرا مؤزرا اللهم وحد صفوفهم اللهم اجمع كلمتهم على الحق يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين وأموالهم وأعراضهم ومساجدهم ومدارسهم ومراكزهم يا رب العالمين يا أرحم الراحمين محاذ اپنے فضل و کرم سے ہم سب کی مغفرت فرما دیجئے ہمارے ساتھ زحم کرم کا معاملہ فرمائیے پوری امت کی مغفرت فرمائیے یا اللہ امت کی بگڑی بنا دیجئے یا اللہ امت اس وقت بڑی پریشانی کی عالم میں ہے یا اللہ جہاں دیکھو مسلمان کا خون بہر ہائے پروردگار عالم کی امت آپ کی بہت محتاج ہے یا اللہ کی طرف سے غیبی مدد و نصرت کی محتاج ہے یا اللہ پوری امت پر رحم فرما دیجئے یا اللہ پوری امت پر رحم فرما دیجئے یا اللہ پوری امت پر رحم فرما دیجئے یا اللہ پوری انسانیت پر رحم فرمائیے یا اللہ ہمارے قلوب میں الفت محبت پیدا فرمائیے یا اللہ مسلمانوں کی قلوب میں الفت محبت پیدا فرمائیے ہم سب کو ایک اور نیک بنائیے مل جل کر دین کو آگے بڑھانے کی توفیق نصیب فرمائیے یا رحم الراحمین ہمارے اس جلسے کو قبول فرمائیے جو حضرات بڑی محبت سے اس میں شرکت کرنے کے لیے آئے یا اللہ ان کو جزائے خیر عطا فرمائیے سب کے جان میں مال میں عزت میں عبرو میں برکت عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ ختم نبوت کا عقیدہ ہمارے دل و دماغ میں پیوست فرمائیے یا اللہ ہمارا عقیدہ بھی درست فرمائیے اور ہمارے بچوں کے اللہ دین اور ایمان کی بھی حفاظت فرمائیے استقامت عطا فرمائیے یا رحم الراحمین او اللہ او اللہ یو آر دا موسٹ مرسیفل امونگ دوز ہو شو مرسی یا اللہ یو آر موسٹ گریشس یو آر اکرم الاکرمین او اللہ فرسٹ اف آل وی بیگ یو فار آور مغفرت ان فرگیونس او اللہ فرگیو آور سنز او مرسی اپون اس او اللہ فرگیو آور میجر سنز مائنر سنز دا ونز بی کمیٹڈ ات نائٹ دا ونز بی کمیٹڈ ان براڈ ڈی لائٹ O oh Allah, forgive the sins we committed in front of the television, in front of the commute, computer, on, the, on our phones, on all the, all the technologies that we have. O oh Allah, forgive our sins of the eyes, sins of the ears, sins of the tongue, sins of the hands and feet, our private parts. O oh Allah, cleanse us. O oh Allah, wash away our sins, purify us, have mercy upon us. O oh Allah, give us the true and correct understanding of our beautiful deen. O oh Allah, give us the correct belief in the khatm-e-nabuwat and finality of nabuwat of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Oh Allah, give us His true love. Oh Allah, give us His ishq and muhabbat. Oh Allah, give us that love which is so strong that we don't, our minds don't turn towards anyone else besides our Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Oh Allah, oh Allah, give us correct beliefs and give, keep us steadfast upon Sirat al-Mustaqim and upon this belief. Oh Allah, give hidayah to us and all the community around us, all the firaq, oh Allah, around us. Oh Allah, give them hidayah. Give hidayah to the Muslims and the non-Muslims alike. And oh Allah, spread the word of hidayah throughout the whole of globe. And oh Allah, spread peace and aman and chain and sukoon and security throughout the whole world. Accept our humble du'as. Be pleased with us. And give us all go those good things which your beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked from you. And protect us from all those evils, trials, tribulations, problems from which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought your protection. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim. Wa tuba alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawabur rahim. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi rahmatika ya arhamur rahim. Haa bai, wo ek or announcement bhi sunle.